Praise the Lord from Pastor Strader at Lighthouse Church. Thanks for connecting with us through our podcast. Our prayer is that it's a blessing to you as we try to reach, equip, and mobilize Jesus' name disciples in Apache Junction, Arizona, and the surrounding region. Enjoy today's podcast and come back often. God bless you. We love you. Let's talk about altar working. And I'm not going to share everything because pastor said I'm going to come back. So aren't you thankful I'm not going to take all night? I got a yes before they even do what I was saying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I heard this uh, little st- cute little story. It's called Lord's Army. A man told a story. He said uh, he, he uh, had a friend and it was in front of him. He said, coming out of church. And uh, the preacher standing at the door as always shaking hands. And he said, he, he grabbed my friend by the hand. And he pulled him aside and he said, you need to join the army of the Lord. He said, my friend said, I'm already in the army of the Lord. The pastor said, well, how come I only see you on Christmas and Easter? The man said, I'm in the secret service. I don't want to be in the secret service. I want people to know that I'm a part of the family and the army of God, right? So that's why we're here tonight, because we love the Lord and we want to be present, front and center, Lord. I want you to use me, right? You know, (laughs) do you remember your original Holy Ghost experience? I remember I was five years old, three days before my sixth birthday. We were in that little church down in Mesa. I don't probably know when here has ever been there. Have you been there? That little white church? It's still there. I took a picture of it the other day. It just it, If you put 50 people in the church, it was sardines, man. You knew what everybody had for breakfast. And so we had a little coat closet behind the platform. Remember that? Just to, I mean, and there was nothing in it except for some, some little metal chairs on a concrete floor. And my mom preached that morning. She didn't teach. She preached. She preached hell. <laughs> and she said, if you don't make a decision to live for God, you're going there. And I remember getting down on my knees and praying through the Holy Ghost. Dad was out teaching the class, and there was a side door going into that room. I threw the door open. I stood in the door speaking in tongues. The whole church, they jumped up. They started clapping. They were <laughs> I, so I remember when I, it was beautiful. It was the day I knew there's something more than just this life. There's an after. There's an eternity. And I just got eternity in me. There's something special about it. Something powerful about it. I I, I believe it was like what King David felt when the presence of God came on him. He didn't receive the Holy Ghost, but he felt the presence of God because no man can tear a bear apart. No man can tear a lion apart. No man can face a giant except for the Spirit of God go with him. That's why he said he picked up those smooth stones. I don't, he had no clue that five stones was J-E-S-U-S. Right? But he said, I come to you. He didn't even know the name. But he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord because the Spirit, God will use you. When you come into, we're talking about altar work now. When you come to the altar, if you say, God, help me help somebody. Lord, let me feel your love for a person. Because if you feel the love of God, you'll pray for people you don't even like. See, I don't have to like you. I just have to love you. There are people in my life I don't really care for. They're not the nicest people. But I love them because they're a soul. I'm my, 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 my personality may not click with their personality, but they're still a soul. Every man, every woman, God is looking for you. You don't have to have everybody love you. You need his love. You need his presence. So I, I thought about David when he was involved. You know, he, he had those, those fights. And those, but you know how when he felt the best? In the presence of God. When he brought the ark back. That's when he said, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. He said, man, this feeling, he got out and he was dancing. Mm-hmm, took the kingly robe off. He said, I don't care if you see me in my T-shirt and my shorts. Hallelujah. Right? Because there's something about the power and the pre- it doesn't. We shouldn't take our clothes off. I didn't. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> it's joy unspeakable. <laughs> prayer breaks down walls. You know it. The prayer of the church. The prayers of the church matter. 
You wonder why pastor asked you to come early and pray? Number one, we need to get ourselves right. I want, if I'm going to be used of God, i got to be right with God. So I come and I get myself. I'm a mature Christian. I'm not a little kid anymore. These kids probably still mom sets their clothes out, may have to put it on them. Right? That's what happens with children. Children have to be coddled. They have to be fed milk. I'm a steak eater. I'm a, I, I, I like steak. I like seeing somebody get, whew, that was a good steak, man. That was, that was some steak and lobster. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, though? In the presence of God, I become an adult. And as an adult, I don't wait till church time to repent. I don't wait till church time to get things going. I come early. And I get myself right so that when I pray for you, I'm not having to repent for myself before I can say something to you. I say, God, use me today. I want to walk in the spirit. I don't want to walk in my spirit or else y'all are in trouble. But I want to walk in his spirit. Proverbs 11.30 says this. The fruit of righteousness is as a tree of life. He that winneth souls is wise. You know Why? What you going to take to heaven? <coughs> nothing. Nothing but your spirit. Right? Not your money. Not your mansion. Not your nice car, huh? That's a nice car you're driving out there. Is that a BMW, right? Or is that a Mercedes? BMW. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw a bunch of guys out there drooling over it. <laughs> but you can't take it to heaven. It's a nice thing to have here on earth. Right? but it's not going to heaven. What's going to heaven is the spiritual relationships, my spirit and every spirit that I can take. When it says store up treasure, it's every relationship that you build in Christ. Everyone you win to God, everyone you keep in God. Your brothers and sisters matter. We strengthen and love each other. That's why we pray with, that's what the altar's about. Strength. The altar's about the power of God flowing. The altar's about life's changing. The altar's about, hey, I, I, the devil was pulling me out. I was almost gone. But sister so-and-so, she came over and she touched me and she spoke in tongues and I felt something and it stirred my soul and I let God renew me and so I didn't go down a road that I might have gone down because somebody cared enough to say a prayer for me. Matthew 6, verse 19 says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal. On earth they can steal it, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. Mm, when you win a soul, you've won something that'll last forever. Let's talk about the do's and don'ts. And Pastor, you can set me straight if you disagree with something I say here. I don't, I don't think you will, but we'll see. Do's and don'ts. Number one, what we should do is approach people with humility. The greatest gift that an altar worker has is humbleness. If I come to you and let me pray for you, how did you just feel when I said that? Like, who do you think you are? You think you something, don't you? Don't, don't touch me, Right? You come to somebody with haughtiness, you'll get shut down. They may not say it to you. They may keep it on the inside. They may be nicer than me. I'll probably say, oh, wait a second. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> right? But if I come and say, hey, bro, hey, sis, can I pray for you? You see the different, You see the way you feel when I say it that way? I'm not going, let me pray for you. I'm saying, can I? And then I don't know how many times I've done that to someone that wasn't even moving. God directed me, go back and talk to that person. So I didn't go back and say, God told me that I need to pray for you. <laughs> Who are you to hear, God? I don't know you, dude. You just came to our church. Never seen you before. That's another thing I do. I meet people. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the or, or normal evangelist who has to go back and study and pray and, and hide in the pastor's office. I get out and meet people. Meet people, know people. You want to be a good altar worker? Be a greeter. Because if I shake your hand and I say, hey, man, it's good to see you today. My name is Jonathan. I'm your visiting evangelist. Oh, yeah, we heard you were coming. Yeah, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Fred. Oh, nice to meet you, Fred. Then when I come to the altar and Fred's heard the message and God's pulled on him and he comes down here and he's praying, 
I can slip over and say, God, thank you for touching Fred. Thank you for reaching for my friend. Thank you, God, for Fred. I'm asking you, Lord, to bless him today. I ask you to bless his family. Lord, bless his children. Bless him on his job. I start off blessing because I want to get an open door. If I start off by saying, oh, God, forgive Fred for his sin. Oh, he's a dirty, rotten sinner, Lord. Fred's going to shut me off. Right? But if I come in humility and I ask for a blessing, then I say, Fred, I feel the spirit of God. God wants to come and live in you. Would you like that? Fred's going to go, well, yeah. What you're saying is nice. What you're saying is ple- What you're saying, it strikes my heartstring. Right? Let the anointing and the love of God come on you and love people. Yes. Do's and don'ts. And get back to that. <laughs> Personal hygiene matters. And I ain't picking on nobody. Nobody looks like you have bedhead tonight, so it's all good. But come to the house of God clean, smell nice, you know, deodorant's nice, perfume and cologne is nice. Too much is not good. If I go to pray for someone, they're like, whoo, what did he put on tonight? It's killing me. I just changed the atmosphere, right? So I want to smell good, but I don't want to smell too good. Right? Did you know what perfume's made out of? Skunk juice. You don't believe me, do you? It's powerful, and it lasts a long time. So they take it, and they mix it with sweet-smelling stuff, and that's how they come up with cologne and perfume. So not too much, because it might smell like the skunk again. Anyway, be careful, right? Hygiene matters. You use things. Use... If you if you don't eat strong foods before you know don't eat Indian curry food before you come to church, because your breath will knock people down. <laughs> breath mints are the good friend of an altar worker. Have have yeah, pastor made sure I think my breath stunk. Wasn't pastor somebody? Oh, I know who to blame, brother Wasserman. I see you back there. <laughs> the lights are shining. I see you, brother. No, he was just being kind. But yeah, breath mints matter. Because when I come up, if I, my, be, my breath is strong, you, you might be trying to think about God, but your senses are saying, what did he have to eat? Right? So we just need to be careful. We need to consider others, right? I've had people pray with me with bad breath, and I, I promise I wasn't thinking about Jesus at the time. They got to be really desperate to get the Holy Ghost if you got bad breath. There's some things that we need to avoid when we're praying with the seeker. One of them is getting in personal space. Pentecostals, we, I told you, when he got the Holy Ghost, I got jacked up, man. I feel, I, you know how David said, I feel like I could run through a troop and leap over a wall? That's how I feel. When somebody gets the Holy Ghost, I get happy. I feel like I, I'm, an, I'm an old man who doesn't have much left in the tank, but I'll use what I got right now. Let me run through the wall. It feels good, but our excitement sometimes, we get right up on somebody. A good way to tell, if you're praying with someone, you get close enough that they lean back, you in their space. You get close enough, they go like this, you know, oh, Jesus, you're too close. You don't got to get that close, all right? Personal space matters. Again, personal space, we don't need to do the Pentecostal huddle. You ever seen somebody come to church, they've never been there before, someone's loved one comes to church, and they, they actually come to the altar, and everybody's like, yeah, let's get them. <laughs> and then if they're claustrophobic, which I'm kind of claustrophobic, they're going, how do I get out of this mess? Where's the exit, man? They want to duck down and back out of there, right? So I'm not saying that we shouldn't pray. I'm not saying that we shouldn't gather. I'm saying... Be careful. Give space. Stand. I can, be, I can stand from right here to where Josh is at and pray for him. I don't have to be on top of him. I don't, another thing is I don't like it when I see a person praying and they got 10 hands on them. I weigh 300 and none of your business. And if I put my hands on you, you feel it. Right? Even if I just relax against you, you feel it. 
So, so I'm not trying to nail them down. I'm trying to set them free. So when I touch somebody, I don't lean on them. Matter of fact, I don't shake them to death either. I've seen people at a Pentecostal church going, you got one guy on one side pulling this way, one guy over here pulling this way. If you feel the Holy Ghost moving on you and you want to dance, dance, man. Get away from that person and dance. God inhabits the praise of his people. It'll help. But don't dance on them. And don't yank them around, jerk them around. All they're going is, dear God, I can't wait to get out of this Pentecostal church. (laughs) So grabbing and jerking, that's a no-no. Spitting on them, dear God. Every... Everything that I'm telling you about, I have been guilty of at one time or another because I've been an altar worker all my life, practically. So I've spit on people. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And they're like, yeah, get that off of me. Would you believe it? Some of them still got the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because I didn't ignore it. And I was humble about it. I apologized and I set the mood back where it needed to be. Right, And so they let it go. Forgave me and let it go. Spirit matters. Your spirit matters. Touch people. Be careful with people. Don't spit on them. (laughs) Screaming in their ear. I preach. And this is my... uh, That's important, isn't it, honey? I preach the person who should be speaking and directing. If you feel the Holy Ghost directing you to pray with the person, you should stand in front of them and speak to them. Not over here. I got a bad ear and I got a good ear, but I don't want you screaming in either one of them. Right? It's not, you know, you come to, you ever heard that scenario? There's people all around and this guy over here saying, hold on. This guy over here saying, let go. Guy over here saying, push through. Guy behind him saying, whatever, right? Everybody's trying to give them the same directions at the same time. It's a no no. If you're not the person speaking to them and the Holy Ghost prompts you to talk to them, wait your turn. I'm the Holy Ghost junkie. That's what I do. But I won't come up and arm you out. I'd done it when I was a kid. It wasn't smart. It wasn't kind. I've come up and just kind of edged my way in there and prayed with them and they got the Holy Ghost. But I probably wound up offending the brother or sister because God was using them too. And if God's going to use you, he's prompted them to pray. Let them have their time. And if they stand there too long, I may tap them lightly. Can I say something? I don't ask them, I ask that person. Because I'm what? I'm respecting you. If you and I respect each other, we're an awesome team. When we go against each other, we cause division. That person will probably not get the Holy Ghost. So love each other. Respect one another and respect the person you're praying for. When you're praying and you're standing on the side, the greatest thing you can do is what? Speak in tongues. They're here. There's something trying to happen. They feel it. They feel like, oh, my God, I feel like I'm going to speak baby talk. Right? It's not an illegible language with man. And they're going, this is weird. But if they hear you speaking... If they hear you praying in tongues, it's not so hard for them to go ahead and let God move on them, right? And so if, it, if you feel like speaking directly to them and giving them a word and helping them, respect each other, give the word, right? Don't push each other out of the way. Wait your turn or ask nicely, can I speak to them? And if a person asks you to speak to someone, step aside. You said a lot. You blessed them. You did your job. Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel like you did anything wrong. You didn't. You did your job. Every one of us matter. As children of God, everyone is anointed. And so don't let the devil say, well, oh, sister so-and-so just pushed you aside. No. What you said mattered, and then what she said mattered, and God gave the Holy Ghost when he chose. He wasn't doing it to hurt you. He didn't wait till sister so-and-so prayed with them to do No, you mattered. Let's continue to respect each other and help each other pray people through the Holy Ghost. I talked about smothering a seeker. Placing hands in inappropriate manners. Oh, God. Jesus, help us. 
I think we, we preached, you know, we've preached that it's like a river of living water. Out of your belly flows a river of living water. The word says it, so it's true. But I'm not the one who starts the river. I'm not supposed to touch them and poke them in the belly. I see pre- Christians around poking someone in the belly. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna, you're going to make them spit it up like a hairball? No. Don't touch me on my belly. Hmm? Because that's, that's, a, that's an intimate spot. All right? It feels weird for a man or a woman to touch me on my stomach. In fact, I teach don't touch the torso. Nowhere. Shoulders. Okay, here's why. Psychologists, not Christians, psychologists say the most unobtrusive spot, the, eat, the best place to touch someone and not affect them and not harm them, not bother them, is their shoulder. You can be touched on the shoulder, it's no big deal. Unless they're weird. <laughs> then they touch you anywhere and you're like, Ugh. <laughs> But a lot of times when I pray with people, you know, the Bible says laying on of hands. I don't suggest that just everybody just, for one, don't come lay your hands on me like this and mess my hair up. The spirit dies. All I'm thinking about is I got to go to the restroom and make sure that I look okay now. I take a few minutes to comb my hair before I come to church. And I want it to look decent. And by the end of it, I usually look like a hot mess anyway. But don't, you're, you're, you're affecting people wrong. When I pray with someone, I just come and I barely touch them. Fingertips on the forehead. I'm not praying. I don't break their neck. You ever see anybody do that? I had a little man come and pray for me. They grab me up high and they think they got to pull me down to their level. My neck's killing me. My back's killing me. I ain't feeling nothing in the spirit. You just killed it. You, it's not you. Right? Touch, touch does matter. The Bible said the laying on of hands, they received the, but I don't believe they grabbed them and had to force it into them. I don't give the Holy Ghost. The Spirit does. All I have to do is barely touch, or else I'll have someone, raise your hand for me, Pastor. So I, someone praying, a lot of times I just touch them like this. I don't grab them, just, just a touch. Because it does transfer. Just like, just like leaning on them matters. And touch does matter. As a child of God, you're anointed. Most people feel me before I ever touch them. I see people cut their eye at me. I'll be walking the aisle, coming back to pray for them, and they'll be like, oh, God, here he comes. Oh, God, don't, don't let him get me. So, so I'll intentionally just stop and pray for a brother and sister on the way so that I kind of put them at ease before I get there. But they know and I know I'm coming. That's because the Spirit... They know they want it. But how I approach them matters. If I just run back to the sinner and like, you're the dirtiest looking sinner I can see here. Let me come and pray for you. It's kind of rude, ain't it? And you ain't going to receive me, are you? But if I'm careful, you will. So let's be careful. Let's approach. Let's, there's one thing that I, I never did that I saw. <laughs> this is a nutty I saw one time a woman reach in a man's mouth and grab his tongue, trying to help him. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Thank God I never did that one. I can't give you the Holy Ghost. I can't make it happen. I can't shake it into you. I can't, I can't pound it into you. You see these people, they come to Pentecostal church, and they get a good massage. Oh, yeah. Oh, a little bit to the right. Pray for me over there. Oh, come, come back to the left. It's not our job to massage it into them, beat it into them. Have the greatest thing you have is faith. Speak with authority. Your name is Jesus. You're a child of God. And when you call it and you speak it over, just like she said, I want to see somebody get the Holy Ghost. God stood up and said, oh, really? Who can I touch? And then he touched, the, well, touched the, our waitress. Wow. If you speak it. So our words mean much. Be careful. Don't, don't affirm unclear sounds. You know? If they're, if they're just like coughing, or <coughs> that's not the Holy Ghost. I heard a lot of people. I prayed with a, I got a couple minutes. I'm going to share this. I prayed with an apostolic minister's wife. 
She'd been a pastor's wife down in Mexico for 30 years. They were there. She was there with three young ministers and their wives at conference. Went down. She had never received the Holy Ghost. I told you, sounds, just, just some sounds. She was going, Aah! she was shaking like a leaf. But she wasn't speaking in tongues. She was just trembling. The Bible says with stammering lips and another tongue. So she knew she didn't have it yet. 30 years, man. This woman's lived for God. This is a woman of God. This is a powerhouse for God. And so I prayed with her. Told her everything I knew, man. The Bible says the tongue is the most unruly member of the body. It's the hardest thing to control. You got to give control to receive the spirit. You got to let control of your tongue go. That you got to give everything to him. Jesus said, unless you become like little children, you can't enter the kingdom. What happens with the little child? They don't speak perfect English. You don't walk by the nursery and that little one-year-old sit up in bed and say, hey, how's it doing, Dad? How's it going today? No, the baby goes, yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah. He just tries to speak. It's the same thing in that the spirit flows on you. The Bible says, stand in another tongue. You'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I talked to her about forgiveness. If you're not forgiving others, God will, for, it's a principle. The Bible says, unless you forgive, you cannot be forgiven. Let me tell you this. If you've got a deep hurt or wound and you're still angry with someone, let it go. If the devil brings it back, let it go. What does that mean? It doesn't mean it was okay what they did to you. It was evil. They did something physically, emotionally, or spiritually. They harmed you, said something, or did something evil against you. And, and evil people, they don't work when people are looking. They want to catch you when no one else is looking. Then they want to say something mean or do something mean to you. And so we think in our spirit, oh, I, don't, I don't know how to let this go because I'm the only one who really knows how it felt. No, you are not. God is omnipresent. He knows everything. He knows my tomorrow. Yes. All right? So he knows what happened to you. You can trust him with it. What you do is say, God, I, I forgive. What's that mean? I let it go. I give it to you. Then you know what happens? God says, I'm on the job. If you give it to God, he'll go work on that person. Hopefully, he gives them the same grace he gave me. He gave me a chance to repent. Oh, I, I know, I know without a doubt that I have paid for some of my sin. I paid the ticket. <laughs> so I know I paid for it. But I was forgiven the sin when I asked him to forgive me. And he forgives. So when you let it go, guess what it does for you? It unloads your wagon. When you hold a hurt, you got something blocking. When you let it go, now you're open to receive. So I told her that. And uh, I told I I mean, I gave, I, I, I gave her everything but the kitchen sink. I told her everything I had learned to that point. I spent about 30 minutes. I had to go through an interpreter because she barely spoke English. She, I love you, Jesus, hallelujah. She didn't know much English. And so when the Holy Ghost would hit her, this is another thing that bilingual people do. When the Holy Ghost hits them, they just change languages, right? So I'm speaking in Spanish. The Holy Ghost hits me. I think my language is going to change. So I say, oh, hallelujah, I love you, Jesus. Oh, glory, arios, Padre Cristo, right? So I, they go back and forth instead of letting that other language come because we're human, human nature is control, right? So I talked to her about that. You got to let go. I gave her everything I had. I finally, I stepped back. I'm wiping the sweat off my face. And I, when you don't have an answer, guess who has it? I stopped. Yes, you smart. I stopped and I looked to heaven. And I said, God, I've told her everything you taught me. Help me. God said, look at her. So I looked at her. She's just in there. <laughs> Even when I stopped her, she couldn't stop shaking. I mean, that woman was feeling the Holy Ghost from the top of her head. She was feeling it, man. She just wasn't speaking it yet. I stopped her. She's looking at me. God said, look at her. So I looked at her. He said, look at her hand. So I looked at her hand. Just power of God's flowing. He said, is that me or is that her? I said, well, I've seen you move on people. That's you. He said, yes, it is. He said, if I can move her hand, I can move her tongue. 
Duh. I thought I felt so stupid. That's so simple, isn't it? But it's pretty profound. Have you ever heard that before? I hadn't either. <laughs> so I stopped her. I said, I stopped the young man. I said, stop her, stop her. So he stopped her. Make her look at me. She looked at me. I said, ask her to look at her hand. You see, if God gives you a message for somebody, don't try to make it sound real deep and just tell him what, tell him what he told you. She looked at her hand. Is that, is that you or God? She said, ah, oh, espiritu. I said, see, si. one of those Spanish words I know. I said, see, si. it's the power. I said, same spirit will move your tongue. Folks, close your eyes. Focus on God, sister. Let the spirit move your tongue. 30 seconds, that woman was speaking. Woo! The Holy Ghost, was, she was speaking. Oh, I'm telling you, if you'll trust God, Sometimes when it seems like you don't have the answer, if you just step back and say, God, this is not about me. I don't give it. You do. Help me. God will give you a word. And God will help you. And everybody you pray through, I'll share the rest later. I'm just going to finish with this. Everybody you pray through matters. It was last year. My son... I haven't spoke to him in years. Finally did at the beginning of this year. I finally got to see him for a minute. And he got out of the Dodge as quick as he could. And said hi to me and said, I love you, I love you. And then he left. And he won't call me, won't talk to me. Not living for God. And it's one of the things the devil tries to use on me. I'm not in control of him. He's a man. He's almost 30 years old. I can't make him do anything. I can pray for him. That's all I could do. So I had a day, I was just kind of feeling it. And I was just, God, and I don't, you're, you're this so silly. You know, just, I, just got, I just got to, you think that that would last me for two months. <laughs> but the devil, always on Monday, Pastor Strader, why don't you quit, buddy? You just had a good service. It'll never be that good again. You've heard the voice. Why don't you, why don't you just, these people, they don't need you. Why don't you step away? The devil is a liar. So I had one of those days the devil was saying, you might as well quit. You're never going to see him. You're never going to. And I know he's a liar. I've proven it thousands of times over, but it's still, he still gets in your head once in a while. So I was hearing that voice, and I was like, God, the devil's a liar. And in the spirit, God put his arm around me. And he said, this is what I'm going to do when you get to heaven. I'm going to put my arm around you, and I'm going to point to a large group of Hispanic folk. And I'm going to say, son, guess what that is? That's people who came out of one altar service. Because when I told everything I knew, when I was done praying with the sister, all six of those, all three men and their wives, they shook my hand. They looked me in the eye and said, I learned so much. Thank you, Brother Hudson. Thank you for coming over and praying with Mama. She's their spiritual mother. Thank you for coming and praying with our pastor's wife. I learned I'm going to go home. I'm going to use what I got. And I believe in Mexico, people are praying people through the Holy Ghost. And it all came out of me caring enough to say, God, help me. This woman's got to have your spirit. I spent the time. I gave a class like I'm giving now. And every one of you who now goes and prays through someone, God's going to say, son, you were a part of that. Isn't that beautiful? God loves you. God wants to use you. And God will if you'll let him. I saw something beautiful last night. I saw the brothers Rathburn. I saw them gather in a circle together. I kind of encouraged it because I knew what was going to happen. Because the love they have for each other is powerful. Family, family spirit and family love is strong. So when they began, they huddled and they began to pray, you could see a, a, just a Holy Ghost bomb hit them. Did you feel it? Yeah, yeah, they all started speaking. They were all like praying for, when you pray for somebody else, there's a power that goes beyond that little prayer for me, me, me. Right? When you serve God and you help somebody else get the Holy Ghost, God says, come on, son. That's my boy. That's my girl. When you show love for somebody and you pray with them and you pray over them and you're sincere and your heart is toward it, God's just sitting back going... That's my kid right there, man. That's my, it's, like a, it's like your boy hitting a home run. That's my boy. Only it's better. 
because you didn't just hit it out of the, the park. You hit it out of eternity. You help someone find eternal destination. Wow. Isn't God good? Stand with me if you would. I'll close, let me speak just a moment about praying with a shy person. Number one, don't be aggressive. Right? You're just going to scare them. Be gentle. Be loving. Be proactive in, in helping them shift their attention to God. Right? So, Close your eyes. Focus on God. If they're down and they got their arms crossed, they're at the altar, come and pray with them. But after a little bit, say, hey, why don't we stand? Why don't, you see what I'm saying, we? I didn't say, stand up. I'm going to pray for you. Oh, who do I think I am? Why don't we stand and raise our hands to heaven? Close your eyes right now. Raise your hands to heaven. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every man and woman in this house. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would use each of us. The Holy Ghost is here. Come on, come on. You want to be used of God? Come on, let the Holy Ghost come. If I stay full of the Holy Ghost, I stay full of the power of God. I have the power to touch somebody. I have the power to pray over somebody. I have the power to speak into somebody's heart, speak into somebody's life. Oh, God, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I don't know if you want to do the dismissal or if you want me to handle it. I, I want you to know, I do know what you know before I give it to Pastor. If you're here tonight and you still have not received the Holy Ghost, I will pray with you, okay? Just please come to me, talk to me, and we'll pray. Uh, and I give it to Pastor. Can we just give God a hand clap of appreciation and thank him for this, this teaching, this training tonight? Amen. We've got a couple of minutes, and I hope this is all right, Brother Hudson. But uh, you may be seated. Um, I don't want to take advantage of your time, but I do want to give an opportunity for any questions uh, any questions that maybe you have, uh, this is the opportunity, more practical. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Maybe something he did say. <laughs> uh, I was. I will say this. I was listening because I have. I've always. I've always wondered this, Brother Hudson, because I've. I've truly asked God, Lord, tell. Tell me what. I don't want to just go pray for people. I want God to speak to me, and and not tell me their whole life story, but. Help me minister to them, right. connect with them, exactly. So I've prayed for that. But then I, so and, and God has, God's honored that, and I'm not where I need to be, but, you know, God's working on all of us, right? And, and so that's why I think things like this, even if you're the best altar worker, you should still be in something like this. But um, we were listening to an altar working seminar on, on, the, on the phone while we were getting ready one night, and he said this... Uh, this brother said something so profound, but so basic. So many of the things that Brother Hudson said tonight. And it was, uh, it's okay to go to someone and say, how can I pray for you? Um, instead of praying for them and, and guessing, if you feel prompted, is there anything I can help pray, we can pray together about? Um, and, you know, you're not asking them their whole life story. You're not telling, asking them to divulge something in secret, but, you know, private. But is there anything? And if they say no, okay, well, let's just pray together. But if there is, perhaps there's something that you could very specifically, maybe it's a sickness, and like we, we learned with Brother Corbin, we speak directly to that sickness. Well, now we, 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 we're leveraging what God has given us. He's also given us intellect and common sense and all these other things. That's probably the best approach, yes. And if, for example, if I'm going to go pray for a, a lady, uh, especially now, I was I put in my notes, brother. I think you have to read the room. Again, God gives us common sense, and so I would maybe pray for those in this room differently than I would pray for someone who just walked off the street. Okay, uh, and I'm not saying we're inappropriate, but 
we're just different, right? We're family, and you know me, I know you. But if, uh, if there is a, a, say a, a sister comes in here, and I would say, I would, most of the time, I'm going to go get my wife. I'm going to say, hey, would you come with me? Because um, you don't want any thoughts in her mind, and you don't want, I want to make sure that, and sometimes I'll, I'll just lay my hand on my wife, and she'll lay her hands on the, on the lady. Uh, and so, and you know, that's, so yeah, I would say it's probably the most appropriate. And those of you don't have, you don't have a, your husband, go find another brother, if you will. It doesn't have to be your husband per se. It could be a minister. It could be someone else. That's a good question. Now, there are times and there are moments, uh, and typically, always, almost always, I would say, I can't think of a time where I've not done this, we'll say, hey, go find somebody to pray with. Typically, by default, we say man with man, woman, a woman with a woman. Um, but if you are going to pray with someone of uh, the opposite sex, I, I always say the head, or as Brother Hudson said, the, the, the hand, or the shoulder at the very most. Uh, I'm even careful with that with people I've never met before. I'll be honest with you. Sure. I just am. Uh, because, again, we're trying to get them connected with God. We don't want anything, any, any of this carnality to step in and to think, well, uh, we don't know. I'm going to tell you a scenario that we've had. Some people have been, and I've got children, but you can read through the context. They've had difficult lives and different yes, yes. Sick, yes. sick dads, right? They come into here. And the idea of a, someone else, specifically a man, touching them is just very uh, uncomfortable for them. And, you know, the, your private space is different than their private space. And so I'm just very aware of that. And, again, once I know them, they know me. It's a little bit different, right? right? So, but that's a very good question, and, brother. And some women, it's better that a man might pray with them because of the lifestyles they're growing up. Yeah. And vice versa. Absolutely. Yeah. So you just have- and, and just to... Uh, I would say, sister, if my kids do that question, because it leads to other questions. If there's ever a question and you don't know, but you feel the other spirit, it's okay to come to myself or brother call and say, "Hey, this is what I'm feeling. What do you What do you feel? What do you think?" And because every scenario is different. But to that, I'll use an example. I'm going to be completely transparent here. The other night, we had a lady right here praying, right, and I'm up here on the on, on and 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 she's kneeling down, and I knelt down to pray for her. Well, can I just be? She had a low a lower cut shirt on. Okay. And so I did this, and then in, in, in hindsight, I did look away because it's like I don't want her to ever to look at me and think, oh, he's, you know, whatever. I should have probably done this and come down and prayed for her. Uh, man, we definitely need to be very careful with that uh, because, again, we, we, this, is a, this is a hospital. People from the world are going to be in here. They're going to come in here. You know, they're going to dress the way they dress, and we want them to. God will fill the Holy Ghost and change their life. But I... One thing about if someone comes to the altar, I think sometimes, especially older Pentecostals, um, we feel like they need to kneel down there for a long time and repent and whatever. And we have to remember that this is a hospital. How long would you leave a baby on the floor by themselves? You know, so, I mean... Yes, there's time for repentance and all that, but if they if they've sat through the service and they've you don't know what they've done before they got here. They had to do something. God drew them here. So we can't just leave them there. We need to get to them, you know, pretty quickly and let them know they have support. That God God's answered their cry. He's he's seen where, you know, he's seen them and just love on them. Yeah. And I always, oh, go ahead. No, speak power, speak, speak, you know, speak forgiveness over them. You know, God's forgiven you. You did you ask, you ask God, right? A lot of times they won't even say it. You ask God. Do you know the Bible says if you ask, he forgives you? Remind them. Faith. I always think like this. One can put a thousand, but two can put 10,000. Where two or three agree. So whatever it is they have need of, I mean, I know, but I'm agreeing because they're bringing it before the throne of God. I'm just going to agree that God's going to do whatever it is they need. Um, And I'm going to tell you something I learned really quick in Bangladesh, brother. My my, my mind was, my my whole philosophy of receiving the Holy Ghost was shifted in Bangladesh. Because, uh, and I'm just being completely transparent, is sometimes we think they've got to be boo-hooing and crying and on the floor and slain in the spirit their first time receiving the Holy Ghost. That's simply not the case. Just we relate to like a baby. A baby doesn't learn how to speak full sentences or a toddler doesn't learn how to speak full sentences overnight. 
you know, in time, God will develop them. That's why we're going to be starting these discipleship classes to, to equip and then to grow. But they don't have to be slain in the spirit. It, like, you know, they speak in speaking tongues. That's the Holy Ghost. Now it's our job to disciple them. But about when she first came here, she felt uncomfortable that everyone came up and laid hands on her. Like right away. She said that to me the other day. She goes, that was a little too much for me. So I'm just wondering, how do we, and I never thought of that because I'm real touchy anyway, but I, th- I thought, what do we do in that circumstance? Do we, should we just, with a new person, how the Lord leads one person at a time? I mean, I don't want to make it structured, but she felt like she was just standing here and all these women came up to her. And I thought, oh, golly, I didn't even think about that. But now she wants to come because of that, right? She goes, I know I need to be there. But I don't know if there's a way to kind of know, can we stand back and pray and, be, and not be all touching on a person? Yeah. Okay. If you know the situation and she's still hungry, she still wants to come, um, we didn't specifically do anything terrible, but, but it was just a little too much for her. Now you know that, so you protect her. If she comes with me and she comes and too many people, you see all these people coming, you're like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. I'll do the same thing a lot of times when someone's in the church and they need a breakthrough. This is something I learned. If they need a breakthrough, they need, if you've had the Holy Ghost and you need to get back and you need to be renewed, you need to worship. God inhabits the praise of his people, right? So it's not just a simple little, oh, I love you, Jesus. There's nothing breaking loose there. You wanted to break loose? Well, they had to walk around the walls. And on the, on the seventh day, they walked around seven times. Hallelujah. So they're doing something to get. So if you want a, a fellow Christian to get touched, don't everybody stand around with their hands on them. Because you're sucking what little power they do have off of them. When we touch, we connect. I draw energy from you, and I send energy to you. But if you're weak and I'm drawing your energy, that's not good. I want you to get energized. So a lot of times I'll say, I'll say to people, please, take your hands off. I'm not being mean. I'm not trying to hurt the, my fellow Christian. That's why I said it, please, please, you know, and I whisper it. Please, let's take our hands off. I want them to worship. And then, and then I just stand back and I say, come on, let go. Come on. I start encouraging. Uh, but how, how, does the fire, how does the fire get built? When you fan the flames. So I start saying, come on, let's worship. I won't make you do it by yourself. I'll do it with you. Come on, come on, let's worship. And all of a sudden, it'll hit them, and they'll just, wow, you know, go crazy, and they'll get what they need. But they don't, they're not going to get it with me, right? It don't come from me. It comes from the Spirit. So, yeah, I, w- I would be careful. Bring her, protect her, right? And, and, and you can even tell a few people that you know pray with people, hey, uh, don't, you know, we can pray with them, but let's don't all put hands on her at the same time. It bothers her. Just set it up. Yeah. I mean, we would do that if it was any situation in the world that we knew if we love somebody, we would protect them, right? Same thing in the church. Amen. Brother Carl was just telling me a story with his first revival that uh, the people would come to the altar and there's a young lady there and the, the pastor, I suppose, came and prayed for her and was rubbing her back. Um, <laughs> Probably didn't mean anything, I would imagine, of it. It was probably an innocence, but we, you know. They didn't come for back rubs. They came for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Things like but that. But again, context. Again, context. Like, if, I'm going to give Brother, I'm gonna give brother Gissel a back rub from time to time, maybe. I don't know. Uh, bro, brother Wiseman, a back rub's coming your way. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but uh, be very careful. Yeah. Context matters. I can't remember who it was, but she'd been a uh, pastor's wife and was visiting our church. And I was up and I'm like I said, I'm touchy, you know, but I was rubbing and she told me to stop. And I was like, oh, OK, because I don't even know because I, I just do that. But it's it just she said it distracts them. And I didn't know that. So she kind of snapped at me. I was like, ah. But she then apologized to me because she didn't. But she was correcting. So that's just. I've done that. You don't even know because I innately do that with my child when I I just do that. And so I've gone back to my brother or my sister because I could see the look on their face that I offended them. Right. And so I went on and prayed the person through the Holy Ghost. Then I went back to my brother or sister and said, please forgive me. Right. Because you're just trying to teach. This is what I was. I explained what I was doing. Uh, this is what I was trying to get at. I didn't. I, I I was too aggressive about it. And if you go and ask, 
if you're humble, they're going to forgive you. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you're going to you're going to get rid of something that could build and people have left the church for silly stuff like I that. Know. Oh, I know. So sad. So just careful. Yeah, I do remember that. Um, there was a question is how long do you tarry for someone to the Holy Ghost? I mean, is it is it 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour? When do you say, okay, hey, let's stop and let's let's go a different route? I think if you have have you've come and you've prayed up and you're full of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, sometimes I take them past probably what God wants me to, but the Spirit will give you a bump and you'll know. Don't, you know, I, I want everybody to get the Holy Ghost, man. I thought when she was talking about Terry and some people say, well, my, my, my loved one, they tarried for two years for the Holy Ghost. Whoa, that's ridiculous. Today is the day of salvation. You don't have to tarry. So in other words, basically, they were, they were saying, well, they just waited and they waited and they waited and they were just expecting God to kick the door down and force them to get the whole. God's never going to do that. If you want the Holy Ghost, you can have it right now, right here. And then to the answer, the, the tarrying thing, if you pray and it's not happening, let it go. It's not your job to give them the Holy Ghost. It's not your job to win people to save them. You can't save them. God does. All you do is give them your testimony. All you do is love them for God. Speak to them about God. Keep it in front of them. Do your best. Don't be pushy. Because when you push someone, guess what you're doing? Pushing them away from you. Be kind. Help them in their life. Offer them the gospel. Offer them the love of God. And then let God do the drawing. And, and if, if it just seems like, just I, I prayed last night with a couple girls, but I sense they're really shy, and it wasn't going to happen in this kind of atmosphere. Too much noise, too many things, too many people looking at them. Certain people need certain situations, right? Even tonight with, with my brother, I, I knew he didn't need me to, to, to call him out in front of everybody and try to pray for him. He's going to be worried about all these extra eyes looking at him. So let's go in pastor's office, just me, you. Usually it's smart not to be alone, right? You can't get accused of doing something you didn't do and if you have an extra witness, all right? So it's always good to pull someone in to help you. If you're in a public area, in a public space, there's people that see you, you're good. You're all right, okay? Real quick, and I never spot the I, I absolutely agree. Um, I would say if God told me. That's right. I would go and do it, but only <laughs> I'm going to have to, God's going to have to shove me. I'm going to have to go, oh, okay, God, I'll go do it, right? Because I, I, I care enough about me. I, I, I'm, I'm sensitive enough. I don't, I care what people think about. That's why when, if you mess my hair up, I'm ready to go comb my hair, right? So I don't want to put other people on the spot. How, who do I think I am? I, I, I think they're tougher than me or, well, you know what I mean? And so I just be careful. And, and, and I, I don't love that. I don't see that happening a lot these days. But uh, you can pray with somebody anywhere. Right. Anywhere, in the, anywhere they are. I mean, we, we've seen people get the Holy Ghost in the parking lot. They, they, weren't, they weren't ready to come up here in the front. They were either shy or they just they didn't feel comfortable doing that, but they still felt the presence of God and they still wanted it. So if you feel like you need to pray with somebody that's standing back, go back to them and pray with them there. Yeah, but I agree with you, bro. That was, that was a little, uh, a little bold and a little, and, and thank God the per- people who actually came and got it, they were just so hungry. They, they just let, they let that person bully them around. But that wasn't, the best, that wasn't the best witness. And they're telling all the other people in the church that they didn't get who got out of there before they could get God, I'm not going back to that church. How we treat people, it doesn't matter just for today. It matters for tomorrow, the next day. So I agree, brother. Let's treat them good. Let's love them. Yeah. And I, 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 won't, I won't speak in, in, in contrary to that because I agree 100% with all of it. But I will speak on the other end of it. Is I agree. If I feel led to do it, then I'm going to do it. Yes, sir. If if God speaks to me, I'm going to obey the the voice and the word of God. Rarely would I do that to someone who's new that I don't know. But what I'm speaking in, not in contrary, but on the other end, is that I believe, and we can find in scripture. We don't have time to talk about it, but I believe that there is significance in someone taking a step. It may just be out of their aisle, but a step toward the altar. I think we see this throughout Scripture of someone leaving where they're at. Not that God can't fill them where they're sitting. I'm not saying that. 
But I believe, especially for people who know and they're filled with the Holy Ghost, there's something about getting out from where we're at and coming to the front. There, there's a step of faith there. And so um, that's, that's why preachers, uh, we, we try our best to do what we can in altar calls, right, is to get people to the altar. Um, so if I'm going to do it, like he said, God tells me to do it. I'm coming back and saying, and not in the mic. Yeah. I'm coming <laughs> I just showed him respect. I didn't say, hey, man, step out here, come up here. (laughs) That's the way they used to do it. They go grab him and make him. But you see, I ask him. And the Holy Ghost, if the Holy Ghost is telling me to do it, the Holy Ghost will go with me. And if I stay kind, the Holy Ghost will help me make it happen. Amen. If the Lord, I don't see it happen a lot. Yeah. I, the, the guys who do, who, who actually uh, um, prophesy to people, mm-hmm. the ones I like the best are not the ones who come back and say, stand up and call it out. He comes over, he's preaching, he's hitting the word of God. He comes over by me and he calls it out. He doesn't point at me. The pastor's up there going, that's it. <laughs> He's hitting it. He's nailing it. But the, maybe not everybody else has to know. But he comes over close. I, I see some men who do that, man. They're studs. <laughs> they're, holy, they're, they're Holy Ghost men of God. Why? Because they don't have to have the credit. I make him stand up and I point him out. I, it's about me. But if I come and I let God use me to bless him and speak into his life and help him, I'm a man of God. I'm working through the Spirit. I'm, it's not about me. I don't like the about me spirit. Amen. I like it about him. Amen. 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 Let's all stand. I know there may be some other questions, but we can, you can come and ask. We can, Brother Hudson will be here for a few minutes, but I want to be respectful of everybody's time here tonight. So if you have questions, come. To, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. But I hope that everybody enjoyed this. Oh, yeah. Amen. And uh, the reason why we're doing these seminars, the whole, you know, we did Gifts of the Spirit with Brother Corbin a few weeks ago. We're doing this with Brother Hudson. We'll probably need to do it again because I know everything, you could go on for another couple hours probably. But the reason why we're doing this is because we're trying to get equipped. And uh, there's been questions. Can I go pray with somebody? Absolutely. But as Paul said, everything done in order. And that's why we're talking about things like this so that we're all on the same page. Not that anything's been done bad. Uh, but I, I, I love listening to stuff like this. I, I, want, I, want to, I want to build up myself up in the Spirit of God. I can always be better. Amen. Can we lift our hands in dismissal tonight? And let's thank God for all that he's done. Hallelujah. Brother Caldwell, would you pray tonight over us? And let's join him. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. And we appreciate you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.